my video this video is continuation of my previous video history of microscope and a history of microbiology in this video i am presenting about antony van leeuwenhoek antony van leeuwenhoek is well known as the father of microbiology and father of microscopy and considered to be the first microbiologist Leeuwenhoek was one of the most prominent researchers of nature. He opened a door for man to change the point of view of his relationship with nature. Antony van Leeuwenhoek was born in Delft on 24 October 1632 in the Netherlands. His father was a basket maker. and his mother's family were brewers in 1648 at the age of 16 leeuwenhoek moved to the famous dutch trading city of amsterdam and was apprenticed to a textile merchant which is where he probably first encountered magnifying glasses which were used in the textile trade to count thread densities for quality control purposes when he was aged 20 he returned to delft and set himself up as a cloth merchant in 1660 leeuwenhoek obtained a position as chamberlain to the sheriff of delft his income was the secure and this work left him a lot of free time to devote his hobbies and to do other tasks he also worked as a surveyor and as a measurer of wine robert hooke's experiments with microscope inspired antony van leeuwenhoek to further explore the micro world leeuwenhoek began to make lenses and made observations with the microscopes he produced During his lifetime he grounded more than 500 lenses most of which were very small some lenses were no larger than a pinhead these lenses were usually mounted between tin brass plates riveted together a large sample of those lenses were found to have magnification power in the range of 50 to 300 times he developed his own technique of polishing glass that he never told anyone how he made his lenses so his carving technique remains a mystery in basic design probably all of leeuwenhoek's instruments were not microscopes at all but simple powerful magnifying glasses Leeuwenhoek's microscopes were inconvenient to use because the tiny glass bead of a Leeuwenhoek microscope has a very short focal length so one has to held the microscope very close to the eye for observation despite their drawbacks in Leeuwenhoek's expert hands they revealed an entirely new biological world the quality of his observations was so high and his discoveries with the help of his microscope he observed a variety of things including water scrapings from his own teeth blood skin air insects etc etc he observed some minute living creatures of different shapes and sizes in the water and tooth scrapings he called all small organisms as small animals or animal cules those very little animal cules he was able to isolate from different sources such as rainwater pond and well water and the human mouth and intestine he also calculated their sizes he made accurate drawings and clear descriptions of his observations 
in 1673, a friend of Leeuwenhoek, Rainer de Graaf, a brilliant young physician of Delft, wrote a letter about Van Leeuwenhoek's work to Henry Oldenburg, secretary of the Royal Society in London. This letter was published in Royal Society's journal Philosophical Transactions in 1673, in which he described the structure of the mold and one of the sting of the bee. Oldenburg wrote to the author requesting further communication, thus began a correspondence with the Royal Society, which was to continue until Van Leeuwenhoek's death. His observations were described in letters either to the Royal Society or to his friend, that letters were written in his own language, Dutch. Those letters were translated into Latin or English and published them in their journal, Philosophical Transaction, for over 40 years. He sent a total of 375 letters to Royal Society and 27 letters to the Academy of Science of Paris. He was elected a member of the Royal Society in 1680, but he never attended a meeting. Many of Leeuwenhoek's letters were first read by Robert Hoop, who was curator of experiments and then secretary of the society. Hoop actually learned Dutch so he could read Leeuwenhoek's letter for himself. Discoveries He made a number of important scientific discoveries. Let us see some of the important discoveries. In 1674, Leeuwenhoek made the first of his great discoveries, single-celled life forms, that is a protozoa. Many members of the Royal Society refused to believe in the existence of Leeuwenhoek's microscopic creatures. It took until 1677 before their existence was fully accepted. In 1674, Leeuwenhoek examined red blood cells, which had been discovered six years earlier by his fellow Dutchman, Jan Swamadam. With her superior lens, Leeuwenhoek was able to give a clearer description of the cells than ever before and was the first person to determine their size accurately. In 1676, he discovered bacteria in water, the first bacteria observed by man. He estimated that it could take more than 10,000 of them to fill the volume of a small grain of sand. His letter announcing this discovery caused widespread doubt at the Royal Society, but Robert Hooke later repeated the experiment and was able to confirm his discoveries. The first drawing of a bacterium appeared in 1683 in Philosophical Transaction. These discoveries of Leeuwenhoek opened the door to the microbial world. Generally, a strong interest grew among scientists to know more about the origin of the little animals, which later became a controversial issue. While people by and large continued to believe in the concept of spontaneous generation, a few scientists opposed this concept based on the outcome of a series of experiments they conducted. In 1677, he described for the first time the sperm of several species, including humans. He was even the first to recognize that it was the sperm that entered the ovum during fertilization. His letter on the flea is of great interest because in which he not only described its structure clearly but traced out the whole history of its metamorphosis. By observing the life cycle of fleas, Leeuwenhoek proved that 
such creatures are not created spontaneously as many people believed at that time he proved that these creatures undergo a process of reproduction from egg to larva larva to pupa and pupa to adult leven hook carefully studied the history of the ant and was the first to show that what had been commonly reputed to be ants egg bad really their pupae he also observed the reproduction of the eels which at that time were supposed to come from the dew he argued that the sea mussels and other selfishes were not generated out of sand found at the sea shore or mud in the beds of river he studied the anatomy of numerous insects the structure of leaves and wood of many species he described the yeast in the ferments of beer and wine he studied the structure of optic lens striations in muscles and discovered parthenogenesis in aphids he discovered microscopic nematodes Antony van Leeuwenhoek laid the foundations of plant anatomy and became an expert on animal reproduction. In his 50 years of continuous work, he explored many fields of natural science. As his observations spread, he gained fame and social consideration. and he was visited by many notables including peter the great of russia james second of england etc i am concluding this video by saying that antony van leeuwenhoek the dutch microscopist who was the first to observe bacteria and protozoa his researches on lower animals refuted the doctrine of spontaneous generation and as observations helped lay the foundation for the sciences of bacteriology and protozoology thank you friends